Greetings, friends. Greetings, friends. Ah, what time is it? <gasps> it's six. My time, anyway. Which means it's time for Tuesday celebrations. Um, hopefully you can hear me all well. Can I get a confirmation, please? I tested some things, and it seemed great. So I see greetings, and I bid you a greetings as well. Greetings and felicitations to you. Welcome to the channel. Uh, so today we are going to cover kind of a mixed bag of things. Uh, among those um, textures, I'm going to go over sort of uh, how I do these textures. Now, uh, how you do textures will depend on what tools you have access to, but I assure you, um, pretty much everything I'm going to do tonight in Photoshop can also be done in a free tool called GIMP. Uh, the, the process or the procedure might be slightly different, but the concepts are the same. Uh, in fact, uh, early on, I used GIMP as a way to um, kind of change the, the file names of my files when I was working on them, and then I got a plugin for Photoshop that did some of that jazz for me. So let's uh, discuss what we are going to do this evening. Um, so I got Vander, right? Vander uh, needs his armor customized. Now, there's a bunch of different ways that we can do it. I'm going to show you several different things that you can do in Photoshop that will allow you to change things like the tint, the hue, okay? Uh, we'll do some masking. We'll also play around a little bit with things you can do with uh, brightness and contrast to sort of enhance the texture of whatever it is you're working on, junk like that. Uh, but in the end, I'm going to work on tonight's project primarily by uh, just focusing on masking. There are certain parts of the armor that I like as they are uh, that always bothered me about the old version, the blue version, uh, that I'm going to fix tonight. So... We're going to be in Photoshop a lot, but we're going to be popping out to test our work in game. We're also going to be dealing a little bit with what's going on uh, in the SharePoint file hive, if you will. And uh, that will help a lot, I think. All right. Hang on. All right. Excellent. I received a text message. Uh, so this this is my coffee ration for tonight. I'm allowing myself two K cups. That's it. Two K cups. And then after that, or during that, I got to drink water. All right? I don't want to be up. Well, coffee has never kept me up all night. But I don't want to push it, right? Okay, so once we get into Photoshop, I'm going to turn this camera off because I don't really have my setup optimized for a camera. Thus, the ginormous arm in front of the camera here. Um, uh, that way you can see more of the screen, too. You can see kind of what I'm working on. But I just wanted to fill you in on what's going on, so hang on. Okay, so I am damn close, I think. Uh, oh, sweet. Hey, Cal, how you doing? Thank you. Thank you. Cal has been helping me out with a few mod conversions to sort of um, do the best we can to complete Vander in Special Edition. There are certain things we just aren't going to be able to do in Special Edition for a while. Uh, the arm tattoos, just something that can't be done uh, without some extra tools uh, like race menu and stuff like that. I could probably figure it out by doing my, my own textures, but I'm just not there yet. Um, and by not there, meaning I don't have the energy to invest in uh, the investigation it would take me to figure out what needs to happen there. So there are some things I'm just content to wait until the mods come out. The other thing is Imperial Mail has not been converted. That requires SKSE. I have no idea what the author's intent is there. Uh, but... I found that I can come up with a pretty decent workaround for Vander's story just by using Jobs of Skyrim. 
Jobs of Skyrim is out for SE. It has been for a while. And it has it, uh, several different options in it that are actually going to be useful. Um, and maybe we'll take a look at some of that tonight as well. There's a package delivery option. There's mail delivery option. There's uh, stuff you can do for skooma dealers, which is somehow appropriate, um, whether Vander realizes it or not. So that has kind of got me over the hump on that. Uh, the Letho armor that I'm using for him is not available on Nexus, but I managed to snag a copy of it from uh, Bethesda.net, and it actually functions pretty well. Uh, there are a few weird things going on with it. Um, the old version of the armor I had seemed to work a lot better with uh, his shoes. You remember how he his legs were pretty much bare from the knee down, and then he wore like little running shoes. I can still do that, but there's weirdness going on around the ankles um, where the seam from the leg meets, meets the seam for the shoe. There's weird texture stuff going on, like incomplete textures, and I haven't determined if that's because of the shoe or if it's because of the armor mod. I'm not sure which it is. Uh, I tend to think it maybe has more to do with the shoes in SE somehow. So uh, that's something I might be able to fix. But again, that's another one of those things I'm not really interested in investing in. So uh, Vander, for now, is going with boots. And we're going to deal with probably uh, some boots tonight, possibly, as well. Boots, hat, armor, mitts, that whole thing. All right? So what do you say? Oh, we ought to do this, huh? Okay. All right, let's do it. Um, so, maybe, uh, let's see, a good place to start would be just having a real quick gander at Vander. Okay, so that's where we're at right now, right? You can kind of see that. That's pretty much the standard Letho armor, and this is... Obviously, this is a um, an armor conversion from The Witcher, uh, but it's kind of funny because this mod is featured on a character from The Witcher who's huge. I mean, he's massive. Um, and Vander, of course, is a small little guy. You see him right there as compared to uh, Uthgird, the Unbroken, and he's tiny. Um, so... <laughs> It, it's very it's a very different look and what I did is uh, in order to I don't really like the boots that came with it they don't seem like something that you'd run in they don't seem like something that kind of fits tight around the ankle and stuff so I substituted the boots that come with a thieves guild armor that seemed like a good way to go all right so let's hop into some photoshoppery here and again uh, the the concepts and stuff that we're going to go over here are things that you can pull off in GIMP, okay? So we've talked about this a little bit before, but let's, let's do a review. Um, in Skyrim, the file type for textures is going to be a .dds file, okay? It's .dds file. And textures, by default, if they're loaded as loose files, are going to be found inside of data, textures. And then, you know, if, you're, if your mod installs an armor of some kind, usually under armor, and then you'll find some, some custom stuff down in here, okay? Now, the, the Letho armor... Even though it's a small mod, it really only features um, one armor. Uh, for some reason, it had its own BSA. It, it seemed kind of like overkill to me. Um, but you can see that here. Letho Armor Texture, Letho Armor BSA. So I used a BSA extractor to get the files out. First, basically, a BSA is basically it's like a zip file, right? It's like a compressed file. And what I use for that is BAE, which you can download, okay? If we look at the About, uh, let's see, Bethesda Archive Extractor, 
All right. There's I think there's going to be different versions of BAE out there uh, for the different versions of Skyrim uh, legacy or SE. So you want to make sure you get the right one. But with the Letho armor, basically all I really did is it's, it's pretty easy. You just open up the extractor, you grab the texture you want, you drop it in there, and then this allows us to see what the file hive looks like in here. Okay, So we can see the uh, texture files and all that stuff. Now this is really kind of interesting. A lot of times the textures will be broken down into separate pieces. So you'll have a separate texture file for gloves, uh, cuirass, boots, and helmet, or hat, or whatever it is. Um, in this case, there's only one. So that's actually kind of unique. It's, it's drawing everything it needs from one single texture. So let me start by going out here. I've got a folder here called CW Mods. Now, this folder contains all the mods I've ever created, okay? So each one of these folders represents a mod that I have created for one reason or another as part of a story or something. And then I've got a subfolder down here called Special Edition, and this contains mods that I have created for Special Edition, all right? And so I've created a folder here where I just extracted the armor here, okay? And uh, I extracted all of it. I extracted the meshes in here and the textures. And uh, the reason that I extracted the meshes in here is because I just wanted to do a quick experiment with the Curus and see if it was possible for me to remove the daggers on the chest. Um, I tried it with the previous armor uh, from the, the story I recorded on Legacy Skyrim, and at that time the meshes did not allow me to remove the daggers. Well, they still don't. This version of the Letho armor does not allow me to remove them either, which is unfortunate. Um, we went over this um, a little bit in the marathon, but in order to look at a mesh, what I'm doing is I'm using a free tool here called NIFScope. Now there are different versions of NIFScope also, one for Legacy and one for Special Edition. And uh, all I'm going to do is open my mesh file. In this case, what I wanted to look at is the Letho armor full. Okay, and this just lets us view the mesh, okay? So we can kind of see it from all sides. This is essentially what Vander's armor looks like, completely untextured. Now, um, if we're lucky and we select these daggers, we'll be able to isolate them from the rest of the armor and delete them. But unfortunately, if you select that, it, it selects everything. Everything here is one giant interconnected mesh. These parts are not individual. If, if the daggers were kind of their own separate model or branch of the mesh, I would have been able to delete them and save everything else. But because everything's stuck together here, I can't really separate them from the mesh without using a tool like Blender. And I am just not a wizard with uh, 3D tools like that. I don't do 3D modeling. So whenever I can, I'll take mashups and stuff. If there's something I don't like in a mashup, usually I can remove it using NIFScope. Uh, but in this case, everything's one piece, so just impossible, unfortunately. But we can still do what we want uh, with the textures. So texture, armor, letho armor, and you can see there's just this one texture file, all right? This is what it actually looks like in Photoshop. No, it looks kind of weird, eh? Um, but you can see... You can, you can see all the various pieces that are here. Um, and what happens is, in-game, the mesh will grab the textures it needs and ignore everything else. So obviously, uh, it, you know, it doesn't use any of the skin or face or you know, any of those kinds of textures. All that stuff is coming from Skyrim, um, from vanilla Skyrim. But the rest of this stuff... Uh, it uses, and it's kind of interesting because you can see the gloves here, you can see parts of the boots here. Um, it's That's the magic of how textures are applied to a mesh. It just kind of knows uh, by coordinates what goes where. Um, it's pretty cool. So what we're going to do with this 
is my plan is I'm going to mask off the areas that are red and I'm going to isolate them so that we can change the color of the red portions of the armor at will without changing the color on anything else. All right. What that will allow us to do is it'll give us the flexibility to experiment with color uh, because um, I, I guess I kind of like sort of the, the brownish, sort of rustic-looking textures of these leather pieces. What I want is I want the flexibility to change these colored areas, and there aren't a lot of them. Uh, it's it's uh, pretty much these pieces along the shoulder here, these pieces um, at the bottom of the leg, and then there's some little bits of red, although it's faded, on the belt. So I'm not entirely sure whether or not I'm going to worry about the belt just yet. I thought we could maybe isolate these areas. So what we're going to do is mask it off. And basically what that means is I'll be able to change the hue of these areas that are red without messing with any of this other stuff. But uh, that will also give me the option, if I want, to change the tint or the tone of the leather pieces as well without impacting the colored pieces. So I can do the reverse as well, which is pretty cool. Uh, but before we do that, I want to show you some really simple ways, without having to go through all this business of masking, um, that you can kind of change the look of, of a texture pretty quickly. So, so there's a couple of different things that we can do here. One of the things I like to do is I will create layers over the top of this that actually do the heavy lifting. So at any point, if I don't like what I've done, I can simply delete that layer and start over or try something else. And it doesn't really impact the file. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to do layer. I'm going to create a new adjustment layer. And then I'm going to add levels. And I'm going to check this box here because basically what I'm telling it is I, I want it to only color or impact the layer below. So if I add new layers and stick them in here, it's not going to mess with those. Okay, so check that. All right, so here I've got my level meter. And if I wanted, for example, if I wanted this armor to just be darker, I could just kind of slide this thing down, slide it down, slide it down, right? And you can kind of see how it's darkening up like that. If I wanted it to basically be black, I could bring it all the way down here. Now, the problem with this option is that, well, it will successfully make the armor darker. What it also does at the same time is it has the effect of kind of just turning everything flat black. And what you miss is the nuance of this texture here. You know, you're not going to you're not going to be able to see. Uh, the texture of the leather. You're not going to be able to see the cracks and the cuts. You're not going to be able to see the creases, all that kind of stuff. So that that is the the problem with that. Now, if you're dealing with an armor that doesn't have a lot of sort of sophisticated texturing going on, like some of these pieces do, then that's a great you know kind of quick and dirty way to get the job done. Okay. Now. The cool thing about working in layers, obviously, is I can bring it down like this and I can stack other effects on top of it, or I can just hide it, all right? I can just gradually build. So uh, let's see. So the other thing I can do, let's try another one. Create a new adjustment layer, brightness and contrast. Again, I'm going to check the box. Well, let me select my background first because that's what I want to apply it to. New adjustment layer, brightness, contrast, selected, OK. So now I can adjust the brightness and contrast. And really what this is going to do is it's going to make the textures that are already here pop even more. And there are some armors that I've done this on because I wanted to accentuate things like inlay and stuff. So if you remember uh, Sumerian's armor, as we saw it in the previews uh, that I published over the last month or so, uh, he has a pattern of a uh, on the metal of a series of vipers that are engraved on the on the metal, and I never really felt like those looked very good. I didn't feel like they stood out very much, so I masked off the the armor uh, his, on protecting his arms on that armor 
and I made adjustments to the contrast. So by bringing the contrast up, think of it almost like if you had something like, you know, uh, a statue or something that was made out of stone or pewter and you ink washed it and the ink gets down in those cracks and it accentuates the detail in those cracks and it creates um, a sense of depth uh, that is more striking, right? So if we just look at the hood and you look at the wrinkles on that hood right there, they seem pretty pronounced and the more I change the contrast or lose the contrast, the less pronounced those wrinkles seem. So adjusting the contrast is something that I like to do if, if I'm just looking for more detail and richer color. Uh, brightness, maybe. A lot of times I will increase contrast and increase brightness at the same time. And so by increasing the brightness, we're bringing up the light spots. The contrast is bringing up the dark spots. And you can see things really start to pop, right? But you can totally overdo it as well. I mean, you can go to washed out pretty easy. So... So we're not going to do that just yet. Uh, I think what I'm going to do, though, is I am going to leave this layer in here because I might want to use contrast later. So we'll just make sure it's available. And I'll switch it off for now. Uh, the other thing that we can do to quickly change uh, an armor, and this is something that I did with the first version of this armor, is to make an adjustment in the hue and the saturation. So hue and saturation is kind of interesting. You can see all the colors here are zeroed out. If I just want to have this armor go from being red to being blue, I can start to slide this slider, right? And you can see it start to change, right? So now we've got something that looks more blue, right? Now, the problem here is there's really no nuance to this. I mean, this is really a kind of a ham-handed way to change, uh, to change the color because uh, not only are we changing, changing the hue of the colored areas, but we're changing the hue of everything here. Uh, and this is basically how Vander's original armor was created. I did not uh, mask anything off. I simply adjusted the hue and saturation, right? So... Here I, I can change the hue. I can kind of go all across the spectrum. I can kind of find that sweet spot I'm looking for. So let's say maybe, you know, something like this. We've got some greens going on in there and whatnot. And then by adjusting the saturation, I can bring the intensity of the color up or I can make it more desaturated, right? So with the previous version, I enhanced the hues to blue, and I desaturated it a little bit, and then added some contrast, and I pretty much had Vander's armor after that. It was it was pretty much that simple. So I didn't uh, I didn't try to get too fancy with it. Now this time around, I really like I like the fact that we've got some earth tones going on here. It's got a really nice look to it. So I don't want to simply just adjust hue because I want to keep I want to keep this uh, at least for now. Uh, if I do adjust it, I want to be able to adjust it independently of the color. So that's where masking comes in. And I'm going to basically be using here uh, a really simple technique for doing this because um, there's not a lot of colored areas to mask here. So I'm not going to bend over backwards to achieve perfection here. What I want is I, I want it to look good in game. And uh, my experience has been that, that masking is in game is relatively forgiving. Once you stretch something over a mesh, you don't have to get it exactly dead nuts on. And usually the, the mesh will can hide uh, anything that I might miss or whatever. So if it was... You know, something else, uh, a work project or something like that, I might invest more time uh, in the masking, but I'm not going to worry myself too much about it. We're going to use pretty simple technique here. So I've got three main areas I'm going to worry about here to start with. First of all, I guess anybody have any questions about that so far? It's pretty basic stuff because all we're really doing here is once we make this adjustment, we're going to save the file out 
as a DDS file with the same name. Then we're going to create an install package that lets us put it in place to override the default texture that comes inside of the mod itself. So the mod is going to load in game with its default texture. After it's done loading BSAs, it's going to go and look at the file hive and say, oh, wait, here's, here's a different version of the same texture. And whatever is in the folder structure there is going to have precedence over whatever's loading in the BSA file. So uh, whatever we put in there will be loaded last. As long as our texture is loaded last, we're in good shape. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, a lasso tool. But I'm not using the freehand one. I'm using this, this one here. It kind of allows me to string together a series of straight lines, okay, like so. So what I'm going to do, let's bring it up in size here a little bit so you can kind of see what is happening, okay. And then what I'm going to do is kind of follow the seam here. And you can see there's like a little line right in between where the leather that goes over the top of his shoulder meets this red shirt underneath. And so what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm trying to run my line exactly along that line as much as I can. So these seams are kind of black. They look like a black line. And so they help to disguise where the actual seams are. Now, that, that pretty much covers the part that I need to be really precise on. Okay. Now you can see we kind of have these charcoal gray areas in between these distinctive pieces here. The charcoal gray indicates areas that are not used by the meshes. So when I get into those areas, I don't need to be concerned about sticking to the lines. I can kind of skip through like this until I hit the next one. Okay. Then I join up my ends there. Okay, so I've created a mask. Now, the thing I'm going to do here is I always do this just as a fail-safe. You never know what's going to happen, right? Uh, I just created a new layer, and I'm doing Alt-Backspace just to fill that in. I'm not deselecting anything. I just filled it in with a shape, and then I turned the layer off. So if for whatever reason I, I click on the wrong thing or change tools and I lose my selection, I don't have to start over. I don't have to do that whole thing over. I've basically saved the shape. I can go and recreate my selection just by clicking on the shape in that hidden layer. Uh, so how do I know what parts are what? Well, uh, on this armor, it's particularly easy. There are only... Uh, four locations on the actual armor that appear red. So it's pretty easy for me to tell. Now I'm looking at this right now, and I can see by looking at it, I'm familiar enough with the armor, what the armor looks like in game, that I know this is the leg of the armor, right? And this is the pad that kind of goes around his thigh, and this is the red stripe that is buckled just below his knee, I know from looking at the armor that these constitute the, the red bands that go over the shoulder. And this junk here, this is all add-ons that go onto the boots, but they're sitting in the area where the neck hole would be for the cuirass because that's unused space, right? Remember, the, the mesh is, is looking at this and saying, okay, now I've got to load the pants and it kind of knows the coordinates of where to look on this image for the pants. So it doesn't care what's in the spaces in between. So when it's ready to, uh, when it's ready to load up the textures that go over the cuirass, it's going to know the coordinates of this item here, and it's going to disregard whatever's in the neck hole, which means that's open space 
that the developers can use to squeeze in more textures. Okay, so uh, usually when I look at a texture for an armor like this, it's pretty obvious to me where the things are that I want to modify. Usually it is. I mean, I can look at this here and I can see that this is a fingerless glove. I can see that this is the hood. You know, I can see that this is the belt. And I can see that these are all the pieces that will constitute the various buckles and things like that that are on the armor. So that's what I'm looking at. Now, there have been a few times when I've opened up textures and been, what the hell is going on here? You know, I couldn't tell what anything was. But most of the time, most of the time I can tell. All right, so let's zoom in on this. Now, we're going to mask this next one. I'm going to hold down the shift key. Hold down the shift key, and I'm going to add to the mask. Now, do you, you remember a few minutes ago when I was showing you how I was creating those adjustment layers? You remember how I, I checked that little checkbox that basically was saying, apply only my changes to the layer that's immediately below? That's what that means? Well, that checkbox is actually really important, uh, and we're going to be using... We're going to be using that checkbox in conjunction with our masks. So we will be able to say, we will be able to select our masked areas, and then we will be able to do stuff like apply hue and saturation and check that box and have our hue and saturation changes apply only to the area inside the mask. That's why we're creating the mask. So you remember before we said hue, apply a hue and saturation, and it just basically applied hue and saturation changes to the entire texture. What we want to do is we want to be bossy, and we want to tell it exactly what areas of the texture to change. We, won't, we don't want it to change everything willy-nilly. We want it to focus on the color, and leave the leather pieces alone. So creating this mask is going to allow us to isolate it. Now we're, we're going to use the same techniques to make our adjustments that I showed you previously. We'll just be applying those to the mask instead of to the entire thing. Okay? All right. So there's our second mask. All right. Now I'm going to uh, apply my shape again. So I've saved that. I've got my little backup here. All right, that takes care of the two shoulder pieces. Now the next thing I'm going to do is this stripe on the pants here. Uh, remember, these charcoal gray areas are fair game. We don't have to worry too much about masking details there. So I'm going to start here. All right, now look at what I did. Got to check. Is everything selected? Yes. Okay. Now, when I did that, I didn't hold down the shift key, so I could have lost my selection there. That's why the, the backup is important. So I'm holding down the shift key now. All right. And I'm just keeping it held down as I do this. Now, I don't know how the how this this tool works in GIMP. It the concept is the same, but um, the keys you use might be slightly different. And again, you know, GIMP is a freeware tool that you can do a lot of stuff with. So, if you if you don't have access to uh, Photoshop or or even like the less expensive version of Photoshop, Photoshop, Photoshop Elements can do this as well. Okay. You can always use GIMP, and it'll it'll take a little bit of practice and stuff, and and you certainly don't need to uh, go to this extreme where you're masking things off. You could simply go in there and you know make a set of red armor that you kind of like into a set of green armor that you really love. You know. 
by doing some blanket hue and saturation changes or tints even, you know, stuff like that. Okay. So let's zoom out here. Okay, so we got our color areas there selected. Make our little backup. All right. Now, if you take a look at this, you can kind of see now we got the main stuff, right? But there's red here too. <laughs> you know, if I if I wanted to, I could mask all of this stuff off as well. And this would be this would take some time, right? Cuz I'd have to mask this and then I'd have to mask this. Each one of these little pieces I'd have to mask individually if I didn't want to also color over these steel pieces here. All right. But I'm not going to go to that extreme uh yet. I think what I've got right now kind of is going to help to illustrate the point. All right. So I've got these areas selected. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to apply our changes like before. So this time I'm going to say layer, new adjustment layer, hue and saturation. Okay, I've got my my box checked here. It says use previous layer to create clipping mask. Let's do this. Will it do that? Hmm. Let me think. Yeah, let's try it. New adjustment layer, hue saturation. Okay, let's try it, see what happens. Yeah, there we go. So I'm, adjust I'm adjusting the saturation of the red, and you can see that it's only changing the areas that we've masked, right? So I could take all the color out of the red areas, or I could leave it at red, and then I could start to slowly adjust the hue. I could change it to green, blue, purple, all that kind of stuff. Now, what's really cool about this, all right, let's, I'm going to zero these out. We'll get it back to its default. Okay, that's, that's the default. Okay, I've got this colored layer in here. We'll switch it off right now because we don't really need it. But here's the layer I created with my backup, right? I'm going to hold down the control key and I'm going to click on it. I've got my selection again. Now let's do this. Now we're going to invert the selection. Okay, I've just taken my selection and I've inverted it. Okay, now I'm going to go layer, new adjustment layer, hue and saturation. Got my check mark here, right? So it's saying I'm going to only apply my changes to whatever is currently selected. Okay. And it creates a new layer for me. Well, as you can imagine, now I've got the ability to adjust all of that independently, and the red stays consistent, right? So now I can kind of isolate things how I want, or I can vary my effects. So in this case, let's turn our color back on for those pieces. I'm not totally convinced that I don't just like the red how it is. I, I might, actually. Um, so let's grab these. Let's invert our selection. This time we're going to do an adjustment layer with levels. Okay. And I'm going to bring the overall color or levels of the non-red areas down a little bit, okay? Basically what I'm doing is I'm just making them darker. This is what they look like at default. I'm going to make them slightly darker, okay? And then let's maybe try Make our we could make our red a little bit less saturated. Although I when I think of when I think of Vander, I think of you know color popping color, right? Um, 
I think of him as a Volkswagen Beetle. You know, he looks good in, in bright colors. So there we go. All right. Now, that's kind of interesting, although I don't think I like it. We could do blue. We could do orange. Or we could just dial it down a little bit. The other option, I guess, would be to go black on that stuff, right? Suck the color out completely. But I don't think we want to do that. So let's zero this out. We'll stick with the red, but we'll make it a, a bit more saturated if we can. Something like that. Okay, so we adjusted our levels here down a little bit. I'm going to bring them down just a bit more. Then what we're going to do is we're going to add another adjustment layer. And we're going to do the contrast now. I like the contrast, so we're going to increase the contrast a little bit. And we're losing detail, so we're going to bring the brightness up a bit. Adjusting the contrast, like I said, it, it, really, it really brings out the nicks and flaws and scratches in the armor, so it's going to have the overall effect of making his armor also look like it's a lot more lived in, which I think is kind of cool. All right, so that's pretty interesting. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to save as and... Then what I do is up at the root level here, I'm going to save this armor file as a Photoshop file, which will preserve my layers, which means if I get in game and there's something I don't like, I can come back and adjust these layers and try it again. I don't have to redo everything. It'll save all these layers that we've created. All right. Okay. So that takes care of that part. Um... Now to save this out, what I would do is do File, Save As. In the case of Photoshop, I'm going to save this as a DDS file. And in order to do this in Photoshop, I've got a little plugin in Photoshop. Uh, it's an NVIDIA plugin that will allow me to save this as a DDS file. Um, last time I checked, GIMP was able to do this natively. It didn't need anything special to do this. You could save a DDS file straight out of GIMP without having to do this stuff, but I haven't used GIMP in a, in a while, so. so let's replace this. Okay, so here are NVIDIA plugin launches. I'm going to save this as a DX5 file. Now, in uh, Legacy Skyrim, we usually saved things as a DXT1. Um, in SE, we can save things as a DXT5 or a DXT1, uh, depending on the texture. Sometimes a DXT1 doesn't work. I've seen uh, quite a few meshes now that have DXT1, uh, DXT1 textures on them that seem to work fine and others that don't. So I don't really pretend to understand what that all means. I just save everything out as a DXT5 right now. So we'll do that. We'll test it in game. If we get into the game and we feel like the texture is wonky or something isn't working properly, I'll come back out here and save it as a DX, uh, DXT1 uh, and see if that helps. If not, then it's back to the drawing board. Anyway. <laughs> All right. So that takes care of that piece. Um, so... Let's go take a look at it in game, shall we? See how it turned out. And then 
Uh, I think we're going to do the hat after that. And the hat is special because we're going to actually put some graphics on it. And the hat has to be extracted from uh, Skyrim's default BSA files. So that'll be a little different. Okay. All right, where's a good place to go and just... I need good lighting. That looks pretty good right there. Delicious. Oh, yeah. Ooh. I like that. <clears throat> it's kind of interesting. We got a we got a hue on the armor that is very close to the actual hue in his hair. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I like that. All right. It's still red, but it looks almost like a burnt almost like a burnt orange or burgundy maybe or something like that. He looks pretty good, I think. Pretty good. All right. Let's uh, have a closer look here. Yeah, that looks pretty good. You can kind of see why I went with these boots as well. With all the straps and buckles and stuff like that, they kind of look like they go with it. And actually, now that I look at it, the red that is in the belt by default is not much of a departure from what we've got going on down here. Or at least if it is, there's enough space in between it and the shoulder pieces that it, it doesn't stand out like a sore thumb. I'm actually pretty okay with it, how it is. Not bad. Not bad. All right. I'll take it. I'll take it. Okay. So, since we're here, let's uh, talk about a couple other things that I did to customize Vander here. So, when I created him, obviously created him as a wood elf, I tried to find the uh, the a preset that had a face shape that was as close to what I needed as I could find. After selecting that, I made uh, some reductions in the width of the cheekbones and lengthened the chin, uh, changed up the nose quite a bit, that kind of thing. But one of the things I did also is I changed his size and I brought him down a touch in, in overall size by using a console command and then I saved him that way. Okay. The other thing that I did was I used a uh, a command called uh, speed multiplier. So let's take a look at this. I can do player dot set av. That's actor value. Set actor value. Speed mult, and then I can put in a value. So uh, the default speed multiplier for uh, player characters in the game I think is like 115 to 125 something in that range his speed multiplier I put at 140 okay um, and then the other thing I did is because it's Vander after all I did player dot set AV mood and I gave him a mood of three and three indicates smiling he's a smiler he's happy dude usually okay so kind of his default expression is smiling jovial okay 
Uh, then the other thing that I did here is to set his scale. I click on Vander here and I do set scale. The default scale is one, so I set his scale to 0.98. So he's basically two ticks shorter than everybody else out there. Kind of how's that? That's how that works. Okay. I'm not going to do it here because I've already got his his scale set, but I'm using set scale there. Okay. Now my assumption is that I could also do player dot set scale. 0.98. All right. But I do those things and then create a save, and now I've got my shorter, faster, smiling Vander, right? And he's gonna stay that way until, you know, something happens in game to make him angry or upset or something like that, his expression will change, uh, but it'll go back kind of to the smiling default once he gets into a, a better situation. Basically, most of the characters in game use a neutral facial expression, and they only use a smile when they're around somebody who is a friend or a spouse. He basically smiles pretty much all the time. That is his default, rather than being neutral. Okay? Does that make sense to you? All right. And uh, Joe is correct. A lot of these things get saved to the any file. The one thing that I have noticed is the exception is the speed multiplier. The speed multiplier does not seem to be saved to the any file because whenever I load the game, he seems to be back at default speed. I haven't figured that one out yet, but I'm working on it. So this is, this is his default speed. One forty. And this was important to me because my my concept of the character was that he's he's a fast guy. And he's uh he's not fast because he's wearing magic boots, he's fast because he's innately fast. Because he's spent his life running around and he's an athletic little guy and he obviously knows a thing or two about good running form. <laughs> so um, what I didn't want to do is I, I didn't want to waste a valuable enchantment space by enchanting his boots to increase his speed. Now, if you don't have access to console commands, however, that is something that you can do with something like Summer Mist Enchantments. There's a Summer Mist Enchantment for Fortify Speed. Depending on your levels in enchanting, you can fortify boots from 5% to 10%, um, and then you'll be good to go. The other thing I did was I replaced the backpack I was using, which by default was black. I went and got the dark brown one because I figured it would blend in with his armor better. It would, it would look like it fit better. Uh, this particular backpack has four different textures, a brown, dark brown, and black. Previously, I'd been using the black. I figured the dark brown would be kind of a nice, happy medium because... Um, in Legacy, you were able to load all four of these backpacks as separate backpacks with different textures and pick the one that you Your wanted. Now it only allows you to load one ESP file and you have to pick the color you want at the time of install and you're stuck with that. So I decided to go with dark brown as kind of the happy medium here. Okay. All right, so the next thing we're gonna try here is we're gonna, we're gonna work on this hat. And I got a couple of goals for this hat, okay? <laughs> Uh, one of the goals is I really, hey, he's looking right at us. Um, I want to try to make the, I want to try to make the leather on the hat, uh, conform to the hue of the leather in his armor. So I want to make it match the set a bit more. And then I'm also going to put a graphic of some kind on it. So we're going to go and get a graphic and we're going to put on there to make it sort of like his his signature speed cap, his sprinting cap, okay? That is the goal with that. So let's go back to the PC. All right. Ah, where are we here? It is a wonderfully dorky hat, Strudel. Um, 
And I, I think it looks particularly awesome, though, when he's got the goggles up on his head like that. I just love how that whole thing looks. Okay, so first thing we got to do is we got to find the hat. And this could get interesting because the hat is located in one of the game's default BSAs. So, and the problem is that the Skyrim game by default has a bunch of textures in it. So it's got a bunch of BSA files. There you can see them, right? Texture BSA uh, 0 through 8. And we got to figure out which one it's in. Now these are generally arranged um, in alphabetical order the same way that uh, the, the texture categories lay out inside the creation kit. If you have any knowledge of how things are laid out in the creation kit, that helps. But if you don't, then you just kind of have to go by a process of elimination. And what we're looking for is we're looking for a category of textures called clothing. Now my guess is it's not going to be in this first one, but we'll look. Okay. Okay. LOD settings, no. These are LODs. We don't have to worry about those. Oops, that was because I went with meshes. Texture, o -O -O -O. zero of the zeros. Uh, actors. Okay, it's not in zero. So we'll drag in one. Take a look at that. Okay, we've got actors and architecture. What we're looking for is probably going to be a category called clothing. So we're in the A's now. Keep working our way down. Okay, here's clothes. Okay, this is the one we want. So this hat is going to be, I, I think it's classified as possibly farm clothing. Oh, but this one, yeah, look at this one is broken up into categories here. Okay, I know it's not called a hood. It's specifically called a hat. So let's just check farm clothes one. Okay, there's no hats in 01. Hmm. There's hats in there in two, hood in three, clothes in four, and then we get to find clothes. So the only place that we really seem to have hats was in O2, right? Nothing in variants. So it is more than likely going to be one of these two, would be my guess. Feeling like it's not going to be these. Usually the F here, if it says hat F, a lot of times that in a texture file, that will indicate that it's for a female character. So we're going to bypass those. And we're going to say that what we're looking for is under the male category, and it's going to be one of these two. So we're going to gamble on that. We're going to deselect everything. We're going to come down here to these. We'll select those. And we're going to quickly extract these. And so what I'm going to do when I extract them is I'm going to pop them out here in this little folder structure that I've created for my mods, <clears throat> and we're going to create a new folder here, CW uh, Sprint Cap, and then we're going to extract everything there, and then we are going to go take a quick look and see if what we need is there. Now, I'll be able to tell as soon as I, as soon as I see the texture, I'll be able to tell whether or not it's the right one. Textures, clothes, farm clothes 02, male, and yes. 
That is my hat right there. That is the texture for the hat. We got it. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. Ah, oh, my coffee is now lukewarm, but still acceptable. All right. So what I got here is <clears throat> I've got some of this action for reference. Okay. So I'm going to be kind of referring to this. And this hat is, I mean, it's basically all, you know, it's a series of pieces, presumably cut from the same creature and sewn into a hat. So I don't have any problem at all with making adjustments here um, on the entire thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a layer adjustment for levels. Um, I know that I'm going to need a layer adjustment for contrast. Okay. Now, you remember uh, in the previous incarnation of Fleet, he had a blue uniform, which included a blue hat and blue shoes. I'm not going to colorize this. My goal is to try to make it kind of the same as the leather from the rest of the uniform. So let's go back and take a look at what we did previously. And I can look here and I can say, okay, here's, here's my levels. And here, on this one, I set my levels to 131. That's where I ended up. So we could come back here and we could try that first. See where that gets us. Okay. I'm going to go back here, and we're going to look at our contrast settings, 73, 73. So let's just try matching it up once. This only works, of course, if what we started with was roughly the same. And I don't think it was, but I love, love, love how the brightness and contrast just really brings out the texture of this thing. Oh, I, I like that effect a lot. I use it a lot, especially on stuff that is really textured like this. Lots of wrinkles and chips and scratches and stuff. It just really looks cool. So if we come back and look now, if we look at that as an example, or the back of the glove, or this part of the tabard, right? It's pretty dark. So I think that I think our contrast is great. I think that's perfect. But I think our levels are going to come down a little bit to say right about there. Okay? Now, that does it for that. So let's do this. We're going to save, sprint cap. This is going to be our... I don't want your update. Okay. Save this. All right. We got our Photoshop file. Now, the thing that we're good, what we're basically doing here is when I save this texture out, when we do a replacer, uh, basically what it means is that every single farmer and courier who wears this cap in game is going to have exactly the same look and cap as we do. The only way to avoid that happening is to go into Creation Kit and create an absolutely unique cap. Basically, we would copy all the entries for the farmer's hat, and we would save them with our own name, something like, you know, Vander's Sprint Cap. And then we would apply a, our own custom version of the texture to that unique item so that the hat was actually one of a kind. So I'm not going to go over that. Right now we're going to make this into a texture replacer. So everybody who wears this hat will have the same hat that we do. Um, and then uh, maybe what I'll do in the next, in the next uh, Couch Creates episode is we'll go into Creation Kit and we'll learn how to make a unique item and apply a texture to it. And that'll be kind of the next evolution <laughs> of this whole thing so that uh, Vander has his own individual cap and not everybody in the universe is wearing the same one. Um, this is a good start, though. We'll take it incrementally because it gets that gets complicated. So, uh, okay, so save as. And now we're going to save it deep 
down in our folder structure here. And we're just overwriting this, okay? Now, incidentally, let's, well, first of all, let's save this. Yes, we're going to replace it, and we'll call it a DX5. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to package this up into something that we can install into the game that will overwrite the default. First of all, this is just, th this is necessary, but it's not necessary for us. The default game is going to load this up. We're not replacing this. So to save overhead on our mod, I'm going to go ahead and delete that because I know that uh, Vanilla Skyrim is going to provide that required texture. Okay, so here's our path. Textures, close, farm close, M for mail. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go up to my root level. And here I'm going to create my install package. All it is is a zip file. Okay. And I'm going to save it with my own naming convention, which is always uh, CW mod. Then I'm going to do sprint cap. Okay. And then I'm going to take everything from texture on down and I'm going to drop it in there. Okay. That's easy peasy. That is our install package. Okay. That's it. That's all that's required. Okay. Now we're going to install it. We'll close this. Now I'm using Nexus Mod Manager. You can see I'm in the Vander Nightbrook profile here. So what I'm going to do is add my own mod. So I'm going to hit the plus sign here. And then I'm going to navigate out to my archive, and I'm going to select my install package. Sprint cap right there. Okay. So I select that. And you can see complete CW mod sprint cap has been added. Okay. So if we look here, we can see CW mod sprint cap. We're going to activate this. Okay. So that's in there. Now, the thing to notice here is if we go over to plugins, there's no plugin for it, right? There doesn't need to be a plugin for it because all it is is a texture replacer. It doesn't require an ESP file or anything like that, okay? It doesn't need an ESP file unless it's changing something inside a creation kit, you know, and we're not doing that. We're just swapping out a texture from the vanilla game with our own custom one. So then the question is, where did it actually put it? So if we look at our folder structure now, okay, we're a Skyrim Special Edition, Data, Textures, Clothes, Farm Clothes, Mail, Sprint Cap. That's where it put it. So the way that that is going to work is that Skyrim is going to go through and it's going to load all of those BSA files. It's going to load all those textures. Then when it's done with the BSA files, it's going to switch over to the folder structure. If it finds anything in the folder structure that overwrites anything in the BSA structure, that's what it's going to do. So by putting it in here, we're basically saying load my texture last. And that's how we're doing a replacement. Okay. So that should be everything we need to do here to check that out. So we can go and see if our texture worked first of all. And then we're going to come back and make some tweaks to it. Yes, the monk that is panicking is correct. You can use a zip file or a RAR file. Okay, which one of these? We had one here that was good daylight. This one. Yes. Load. Ah. Uh. Load.
Okay. And there we are. Got our new armor. Now, let's test our hat. Well, you can see the change right there. It's much darker, richer looking. Oh, almost too dark, right? Okay, let's note that. It's even darker than the backpack. So basically what that means is we, I think our contrast is good, but we can dial back our levels a little bit. I think we'll dial back the levels and save it out again to get it right. But that looks pretty good. Pretty happy with that. Okay. Okay, I'm just trying to make a mental note of how dark it was. So we're going to adjust that first. First. Okay. So we're going to go back into our level settings. And I did 76. So let's have a look. This is kind of where we were at, and it felt way too dark. However, that's going to be way too light. So I think let's strike a balance, and let's try that 131 from the, the first part that we did. All right. See you, Demorg. Um, that's good. That's very good. Yes, uh, those are daggers on his chest. And if I had my choice, I would remove them. But they cannot be removed from the mesh. And this is the armor that I like for him. So at one point, there was somebody somebody created a version of the Letho armor out there that, that had the daggers removed. I want to say it was Eleonora that did it. But I can't find that mod anymore. And I did find a version of it with daggers removed once but it didn't load the boots as separates. So when you put the thing on, it was basically the, the cuirass, the pants, and the boots were all one piece, which sucks if you want to wear different boots and also sucks if you're into enchanting because then you've got one less item that you can put enchantments on, right? That kind of screws things up. So I definitely wasn't going to use that uh, for sure. Okay, so let's... Um, we're going to play around here a little bit with some graphics. So let's do this. Um, typing in Rift and Logo. I'm going to go to Images. And I'm looking for a nice, clean version of this. We've got some at the top here. This thing with a shield is not bad. Not too bad. This one would probably be superior just because it's larger, although this one is kind of interesting as well because it looks like it's hand-drawn. Let's try this. All right, so what I'm going to do here you can see this is a transparent PNG, which actually works out perfectly for us. So I'm going to go to View Image. Now, uh, I can't get this PNG to work in Photoshop if I just copy it in directly. So I'm going to do Save As, and let's drop it. Let's see, do I have... Yeah, I've got working files for Room Runner here. So we'll drop it there. All right. Now, I'm going to open this guy up. There it is. All right. So I brought this in, and it's basically sitting in a completely separate tab right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this tab down here. Now I can get at the layer. I'm going to bring that layer over, and I'm going to drop it in, okay? Now, I'm going to convert this to a smart object. And what a smart object is going to allow me to do is 
change the scale of this without losing as much quality. All right, now we're gonna bring it down. All right. And I'm gonna put it on the ear flaps here. Now, just looking at this right now, I'm thinking this is the front edge of the cap right here. So this is going to be the top seam, and then this seam, this whole thing, these two pieces basically get sewn together, I think, on the back of the head. So let's get a sense of scale here. This is too big. Okay, so we're going to bring it down. Okay. Now we're going to transform rotate. And at this point what I'm thinking is I'm kind of trying to line up the top edge roughly with the seam. Um, All right, I'm going to save that. Now I'm going to copy the layer. So I've just duplicated the layer. Edit, transform, flip, horizontal. I'm going to hold down the shift key, slider on down here. And here I'm just kind of eyeballing this, okay? All right. So I think I kind of have them positioned where I want, roughly. Now I'm going to change their properties. So I'm going to experiment a little bit. First, I'm going to try just switching these over to multiply. Now that's not bad. Multiply will eliminate those white areas. So that's not bad. I mean, it looks like something that could have been um, inked, painted, something like that, onto the leather. Now, the other thing that we can do here is we could try some other options. We could try something like overlay. You can kind of see what overlay does. It doesn't look very good there, but we can also adjust the opacity of the overlay. And that gives the impression of kind of a bleached, like it looks like somebody inked, inked it on there, but then it's just been kind of sun bleached, right? Which is not bad, actually. Not bad at all. Let's try a different experiment with this one. I'm just curious to see if screen does anything for us. No, it doesn't really. So let's go back to multiply. Now if I go multiply and I adjust the opacity... This gives us that tooled, or that, that faded effect, but without the bleaching look, right? I sort of like, I don't know. I like the way that it looks a bit more sun bleached, right? I mean, what does Vander do but spend almost all of his time outdoors running, right? So in, in case you haven't guessed, um, when we return to Vander's adventure, we are going to discover that he has he has been let go by Post Haste, but he has since acquired some kind of sponsorship from the city of Riften. We don't know what that is quite yet, but he is basically more officially a citizen of Riften. Okay, Strudel likes the left side. The leather would be more worn where someone was working to ink it. Yeah, you kind of get the impression like, you know, you'd clean off that space really, really good or you'd rough it up with something like sandpaper, right? And then you'd ink on it, you know, and I kind of like that too. I kind of have to agree there. So let's look at what our values are here. Overlay, 27%. So let's, let's re replicate that here.
Okay, now, this side of the cap is darker. That's what I like about this cap, too, is that it's not, it's not like uh, somebody cut out half of it, just duplicated it, and flip it, flipped it over, right? So we can make them look different on each side, like they've worn, they've worn differently. Um, I think that's just going to enhance the overall effect. Look at that too. Like it, it adds these marks in by the creases where, you know, creases in the cap, say it rubs on the wall or rubs on tree bark and rubs off some of the insignia, right? I mean, to me, that, that looks really cool. That looks pretty worn. Um, let's dial it down just a little, but not too much. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay, so let's take stock of what we did here. I changed our levels to 131. We added our graphics. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save our Photoshop file so we get these changes. So if we don't like how it looks, we can come back in and tweak it again. All right. Now let's save out our texture. All right, sprint cap, textures, close, arm close. Okay. Now, what I don't want to do here, you can see, well, there's two things we're going to do. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to save this new texture into my archive. Okay, that's done. But I don't want to install the mod again. I don't want to uninstall and reinstall the mod. So now I'm going to go out and just save it directly into the folder structure that I created when I installed my mod. So we got to remember where that was, right? Textures, clothes, farm clothes, mail, right there. So we're going to overwrite this with our lighter version is what we're going to do. All right, so that's where it is. So let's do this. File, save as, and we're going to go E Games, Steam Apps, Common, Skyrim Special Edition, Data, Textures, Close, Farm Close, Mail, and we're going to save it as a DDS file. Save this. Overwrite. Yes, overwrite. DXT5. Okay. And that extra step just keeps me from having to create another install package, and then that would be just a huge pain in the ass. The install package does us the favor of creating the folder structure for us, so now it's just expedient for us to go in there and make changes directly to the files in there so that we can kind of try different things and make sure we're getting what we want. So cap is there. We've just overwritten the texture. That's another nice thing about overwriting textures, right? We don't have to worry about ESP files that we would need to reinitialize and stuff like that. It's a whole different kettle of fish if you're creating a mod with an ESP file. So, Okay. Load. Load. Uh, Vanden Nightbrook. That pink-haired kid. There he is. Bing. All right. Well, hopefully, hopefully it looks good this time around. But we've got all of our files saved, so tweaking it is quite fat. Is a quite Quite a fast thing to do now, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. It's quick. Okay. He looks pretty well coordinated, doesn't he? Holy cow. He looks like he's actually got his act together. All right. Look at that. It even shows our graphic here. 
and see how they look. That looks pretty damn cool, I think. And I think they're positioned just about perfect. Ah, oh, yeah. And I think that's exactly the right color, too. Let's do this. SUCSM1. That, I think, turned out great. This should also give you a pretty good idea of how these textures are pieced together. Because having seen it in Photoshop now, you can look at it here and you can see how it comes together. You can see how those seams come together at the back, even though in the texture file themselves, they look like they're spread out. They come together seamlessly once they're wrapped around the mesh. Okay. That one looks great. When you look at it this way, it's interesting, isn't it? There, there must be something in the mesh that makes it look more like fabric when, it's, when you're really close up. From a distance, it looks like leather, but you get close up, there's some kind of a texture going on there that makes it look like fabric. But to me, it looks more like leather. All right. Bada bing. So my plan is I'm going to do something fancy with the boots too. I'm going to I'm going to take a look at the boots in detail um, and see if I can make them match even more closely in color and contrast the armor. But uh, I'm going to save that for another time. The process is basically the same as what we did for the hat. So I'll be making a unique hat and then also a unique set of boots. So remember, at this point, if we run into any couriers or farmers wearing this hat, it's going to be exactly the same as Vander's until we create a, uh, our own unique standalone hat. And so we will do that in two weeks. Okay, does that make sense, everybody? Woohoo! All right. Hey, that, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes, that concludes the creation portion of tonight's extravaganza. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little break, and uh, then I'm going to come back, and we are going to do some running around with Vander in Skyrim. Uh, we're going to work on setting up, continuing to set up his game and kind of get him ready to go. Uh, there are a number of things that we need to take care of, quests that he completed previously that will need to be completed. We could work on a couple of those. There's some other setup things as well that we could do, uh, you know, bits and pieces that we need to make note of. When I do these rebuilds, a lot of times what I'll do is um, run around and, and take a look at the environment and try to remember what's missing, you know? Uh, what was here before that's not now? Uh, who's alive that's supposed to be dead? Where are there supposed to be buildings where there are not buildings? What mods have I forgotten to load? Are there any details about the spells he used, about the weapons that he had, things like that? And we'll kind of, we'll just kind of review everything and go over the complete loadout. All right. So I'm going to take a break, probably about five minutes or so, and I'll be right back. Thanks, guys. <laughs> 